Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to open this guy up. We're going to do some exploratory surgery and see what exactly is going on inside this guy. Can't guarantee I'll figure it out. Probably won't, in fact. And it doesn't really matter because I've already replaced the component. So who cares? Anyway, uh, first thing I got to do is we have to remove these blocks off the top. It's just going to make this whole process a wee bit easier. And I have to disconnect these wires from their terminals. Should be what? This guy. This guy. This guy. Alright. These are good parts to salvage anyway. Can use them in my test setups. All right. If you guys didn't notice, today I am recording in 4K. So hopefully we'll see how well this goes. My future videos will all be in 4K. So depending on the device that you're viewing this, it will make a significant difference. I think most people view on their cell phones and believe it or not, I think to this day, a very good share of the cell phones out there are shooting higher than 1080p, which is what I used to shoot videos in because it was just more convenient. I think a vast majority of my content doesn't really require to be 4K. I mean, that's, that's a little bit overkill, but one of the components I, I didn't really understand what it is, I'll have to look it up later, is this little guy right here. I would assume that this is a little like coupling uh, coupling capacitor. It says 1N5Y2. It's a RIFA R-I-F-A P-M-E-271. I honestly have no clue what that guy is. And I've got a couple others right here on this one. Let's see, this is AC mains, so the reason I have to take all these blocks off is because the end caps are just stamped steel and these wires all go through the end caps. So instead of doing like a C slot and just having them off to the side, which would be way easier they actually have a hole so I have to pull the wires directly through which means shoot that means I, I have to I've got a choke here that I've got to get off that's gonna be real fun okay in order to take this end cap off I need Phillips head screws And this appears to be one entire solid extrusion. So that's why I gotta take these end caps off. So the odd thing is, I'm trying to figure it out. Normally, when you have a heat sink like this, normally your transistors, your MOSFETs, they're going to be screwed in through the side and that way they're they're hard affixed to the side panel and it, it basically uses this as your heat sink but I'm honestly not seeing it I don't see it no crazy okay alright so you can see what they did is uh, they just slid the card in and it's affixed with these Phillips head screws on the bottom. So that means the whole card's going to slide out one side. I have to take all these screws out. Which is weird because 
why use this large of a heat sink if the transistors are not going to be hard affixed to the wall so that they're you know coupled for for better uh, heat transfer I don't know we're gonna find out in just a minute no I'm not really keeping track on where these fasteners come from I'm just pulling them all out who cares there we go and the last side is gonna be this side four more they all should be done. I should have used a power screwdriver on this. <laughs> I had no clue that there's going to be that many fasteners. All right. One last one. Wow. I just don't get it, guys. I really don't get it. Okay, so since this one has more cables and I don't want to goof around with this choke, I'm just going to slide the whole entire PCB out that side. And, wow, well, I can tell right off the bat that my bridge rectifier, which is a beefy little guy, that one is coupled to the side because it's screwed in. So I wonder if the other ones are mounted on the underside of the board too. You can see them right there. Let me guess it's not going to come out that easily. Alright, I have to revert to dead blow. So I'm going to use a dead load hammer and a piece of board to see if I can get it to break free. Without a doubt, there is some sort of um, transfer thermal compound that is, is really maintaining this, this PCB so it won't slide out. So we got to break that loose somehow. Yeah, it sure is. So that bridge rectifier that I mentioned earlier, that guy is firmly cemented to the wall. So I've got to get a flathead screwdriver into the edge and just kind of slowly pry it loose. There it goes. So I just put it here near the very edge and I rolled it away. And that got it loose. I can't do that to the other ones because they're in the middle of the PCB. Let's see if that helped. Yep, there it goes. Oh boy, okay, cool. All right guys, I got it switched up here so that maybe I can get you guys a better view. All right, broken it loose. Let's carefully slide it out. Well, that's what I thought guys. It's a solid extrusion and if you guys don't know an extrusion is um, basically when they take molten aluminum or it's molten because of the immense amount of pressure that they put in there and it's squeezed through a die and the die is in various shapes so this is an extrusion this guy here is an extrusion there's all sorts of stuff that we use throughout our day that's extrusion I mean even this tripod these these right here are probably extrusions the legs so anyway, uh, that was one solid extrusion. I can't believe that. Um, and all the components that sink heat were mounted to the bottom, which makes no sense because there would be very little thermal transfer between the sides and the top and this base plate right here. You can see there's very low material which would allow it to transfer heat. So why would they do that? That's, I don't know. It gives them a lot of mounting options, obviously, but uh, as far as thermal performance, mounting stuff to the bottom doesn't really help it very much. But uh, that's the heat sink anyway. Okay, guys, uh, well, let's take a look. 
So your AC power comes in right here on this side and it comes through here. We have filtration, uh, inductors and capacitors and your fuse, your, your main fuse, which there's only one fuse on this board, which as you guys have heard me talk about, medical grade power supplies usually have two. Uh, Inrush current resistance and your bridge rectifier mounted, mounted right here on the bottom. And take a look at that. Whoa. All right, guys. Uh, well, right here, you can see this large metal tang, and you have a transistor mounted to it. And this appears to be a voltage regulator. That's what I would say it is. And because it's got to deal with some sort of heat. And right next to it, there's two wire round wire wound resistors right here and right here and they're fried they're absolutely fried can you see them there so this is interesting um here i was thinking all this time that it was going to be over here on the output side but come to find out that is almost certainly the problem here on the input side and so since they're so close to this um, voltage regulator, and this voltage regulator does look like it's gotten hot throughout its life. So yeah, that's your AC power side. Your DC bus is down here. And from there, it goes into your... Uh, there's a couple MOSFETs right here on the bottom. See that? So here's your bridge rectifier. Here's one of your MOSFETs that does your switching. And your switching goes through your transformer. And right here is basically the dissection of the board. So technically there's not anything from this side that connects to this side. Right here's your feedback circuit, which is what I was assuming was gonna be the problem because it was appearing like it just couldn't regulate its power correctly. And these ones right here are opto-isolators. See, right there's one of them. There's a second one right there. So those are opto isolators, and what they do is they give a power feedback to this side of the board, telling it, "Hey, I need more power. Or I need less power." And uh, that basically connects the two sides without using a wire, because you know we want to isolate the two sides of the board. Um. Everything else on this board looks really solid. Uh, over here on the output side, this is where I was assuming a lot of the problems were going to be, and the PCB looks good. I'm uh, looking to see if there's any surprises on the bottom side of the board. No discoloration. There's no indicators of a lot of heat not even around this power this uh, voltage regulator so wow I bet you the whole rest of this board is perfectly fine and it doesn't smell like brown sugar because uh, that's a dead giveaway that like you got a bad transformer or something but and right over here right here in the corner you can see that there's a little potentiometer right there and that adjusts your calibration value for the board. So the way the output side of this works is these wires right here go to your potentiometer that's on the front of the device and your potentiometer basically adjusts your feedback loop uh, saying hey give me more power give me less power based on the resistance and I don't know if they directly are adjusting the voltage that's seen right here on your opto isolators. It'd be interesting if that's the way that they did it because you know as you increase the resistance of the potentiometer you would decrease the you know the LED that's inside your opto isolator. The capacitors look like they're solid. You know often especially over here on the output side you'll see these capacitors they'll get very bubbly they'll leak. It's looking pretty good. Transformers all smell fantastic, like regular electrical components. I know you guys probably think it's weird that you smell a board, but believe it or not, smelling a board will really help you out uh, find other problems. 
But so far, I, I'm putting my bet on these resistors right here. I'm going to try and look up their values and see if I can find them. And I might just also replace that voltage regulator right there. Because he has obviously dealt some heat throughout his life as well. And everything else, I bet you, is perfectly good. Now, this is a $1,900 PSU power supply unit. And I think I can fix it probably with 3 to $4 worth of components. And I'll... Put an order in today and see if I can get those on order. But yep, uh, just two wire round resistors um, in parallel. And I don't, I honestly don't know if those are being used as a shunt to help this guy figure out its value or what. But um, yeah, that's it. So anyway, guys, I hope this was entertaining or maybe even slightly informative because uh, we never know what we're going to get when we open one of these guys up. And sure enough, just when you guess it, 3 or $4 worth of components can ruin a $1,900 power supply. So this is one of those times when you're like, hey, why, why do biomeds need to solder? Well, because if you do improve those skill sets, then changing out two resistors, which are actually pretty easy to get to, save yourself a lot of money, at least to make this a backup board, just in case. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching and uh, I will get these parts on order and maybe I'll make another video showing how this went in the end. Thanks again guys.